Brought to you direct from Studio 3B at Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods, the American Hardwood Advisor is your source for trends, tips, and insights into how the building industry has evolved. Join me, Steve Stack, along with guest builders and industry leaders as we talk shop and go in depth on what it takes to be the best of the best. Dive into topics like architecture, industry trends, project plans, historical tools, tricks of the trade, and life's lessons from more than six decades of experience in the hardwood lumber business. Hey, welcome everybody. Steve Stack, Studio 3B, Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. And uh, we're gonna talk a little product specific today. And I brought in the expert, Mr. Terry Baird. Welcome, Terry. Thanks. <laughs> oh, come on now. I know I, I, you've, you've, you've been broke in on this a little bit. You, you did some stuff with our friend from Oak Hill Millworks on some of the, uh, uh, when you deep dove into the species yeah. and, and uh, did some species descriptions and usages and availability, this, that, and the other thing. We're going to do the same thing. And, and this is uh, the beauty of this. It, we're going to start, we're going to start talking and you being the lumberman and me being with you guys being around for so long it's just going to be it's going to be sitting up at your desk and having a conversation but what we want to get into today among some of our other products is uh, not necessarily a newer product we've been making it into some paneling uh, like behind us here but it's the live sawn character grade white oak yeah i mean we're not the first ones to do it uh, it's been around, there's been other guys doing it, but the customers um, asking for it, it's a very nice product. Um, so we, you know, you try to respond to what the customers are looking for. You know, in, in our industry, we've seen it, you know, time and time again. It, it follows what the interior designers and decorators and the builders and the cabinet makers kinda kinda offer. And as of late, you know, going back five years ago, the white oak started getting hot because it was a nice, nice neutral color and then it expanded into some character grade and then all of a sudden it's gone into this live sawn. Uh, and and it's a different it's a different product because of the way it's produced off the sawmill. Yeah, it, it's kind of a hybrid that you're getting um a little bit of everything in one product, um, you know, depending on where it comes off of the can as they're sawing it, you'll have the flat sawn, typical cathedral looking grain, and as you start slicing down through the can, the grain configuration changes, so now you're getting in kind of a rifty cathedral, and as you come down further, you're into a quarter sawn, a little bit of cathedral, and you know, on some of those boards, once you hit the center with the pith, you have to take that out because it'll split. And then you might have some narrower pieces that are going to be quartered rifty. And as you come down through it, it's just a reverse. So you're getting everything. So we're, we're envisioning this round log with the round growth rings on it. And if we have this round object, the log, and we start at the top in elementary terms, you start sawing it. And you don't change the orientation of the log while it's being sawn, correct? Correct. I mean, what they're doing with the log is they're squaring it up four sides to start with. Um, and you might pull some better grade because your, your best grade's on the outside of the log typically. So they'll pull the lumber off, we'll call it. Then once they get it squared up, and mills will saw it to a fixed size, you know, like a nine inch can't, 12 inch, six inch. Um, then they'll just saw right down through it, like you said, Steve, from so, top to bottom. So in effect, you can, you could, you know, we offer right, right now, we offer product in the uh, live saw and white oak, mm -hmm. we offer product up to seven inch. Yes. And, and, but in that seven inch board, it's very possible to have rift or quartered out on the edges yep. and a plain flat sawn yes. cathedral material in the center of that board. Yeah, yeah, and as we're getting into it more, you know, there's the option to go wider if you'd like to get a more of a look. Same holds true for some of the narrower because we offer the live sawn uh, flooring product in 
a three inch to a seven inch width right now, everything in between three, four, five, six, and seven. But you, you could run into some five and six inch stuff that it might be all flats on. Yes. And you might run into some that could be majority quarter to rift. Yeah, yeah. When you're into the small, like the larger of the smaller widths, if that makes sense. Right. Um, to where like a six inch or a five inch, theoretically, it, it's not going to have the same look as a three or a four. And there again, it's not going to look like the seven inch. <coughs> Because a lot of those wider boards to get that three and four inch are getting busted in half. Correct. Correct. In in the ripping and milling operation, it's getting broke down to a smaller width. Yeah, yeah. Because technically, a, a live sawn three inch piece is a piece of flat sawn two and three common white oak. Right. Right. For all intent and purposes. And yeah. and uh, but that's the beauty of this product is it gives you in effect, three different flavors. Yes, within that same species. Cut, right, yes. within that species. Yeah, and you know, the grade too, you know, it's not all rustic. It's more rustic than clear is how I'd describe it. Correct. Um, you can get some better pieces, but for the most part, it's gonna have a good character to it. And you know, as we always try to do with our character, where it's not necessarily the size of the defect, it's the soundness of it, and if you can see through it. Yeah, you want it to be sound material. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this, this whole thing, like, like I mentioned, it's played out over the last five, six years with the demand on select white oak, on quarter to rift white oak, and every time you come through the offices, I, I hear you telling the guys, can't you guys sell anything other than white oak? And, and, uh, and what it's done and it's starting to self-level again a little bit, but what it's done over the course of the last five or six years, it, it, it drove that price of white oak up yeah. because it was high in demand. Uh, and you were, we were talking off camera. Some of the other things that you don't even think about, products that require white oak. Yeah, the uh, stave markets kind of turned the white oak market up on its side. So when you're talking staves, you're talking staves for wood barrels, for the wine and whiskey yeah. industry, right? Yeah. And you can only imagine the the volume of product that goes into that industry. Yeah, the, the volume's good, but the price they can pay for it yeah. is not apples to apples in our world. Right, right. Um, they can pay so much more for what they want that you're gonna go to where the highest buck is. It has a lot of, it has a lot of qualities. And, and uh, one of the qualities is the natural coloration. Uh, it's referred to as white oak. It has maybe a little bit of a silver gray cast to it at times versus its cousin, the red oak, which has that reddish pinky undertone to it. Yeah, and white oak in general speaking um, is a very much more consistent and uniform in color than red oak. You don't have that wide, broad yeah. uh, variation, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but again, like uh, like we've talked in the past, in all the demand on the white oak, it made red oak a very valuable purchase. Oh yeah, for the bang for the buck, and a, a coat of stain, and. 95% of the people aren't going to tell if it's red or white. The architects had some influence along with the interior designers. Uh, <clears throat> the trend that we've seen over the last couple, two, three years, four years even, has been the modern farmhouse. And that kind of lends itself to a lighter color coloration throughout the project. Your light grays on the walls, your painted woodwork and a lighter colored floor. And th in that case, the white oak or in our species today, the live sawn white oak, it fit the bill. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. I mean, you can, it looks, I think, a really nice unfinished. And if you're looking for the uh, rustic character product, the white oak is by far a better product than a red oak. It, 
the defects lends itself to be smaller, tighter. And, and, and the thing about it, like you mentioned, we're getting a, a, a pretty good mix as far as character and some select grade material in this live sawn product. Mm -hmm. you're, you're getting a, you know, just, you can folks look behind us and, and you'll see some five, six foot boards that are more or less clear, yeah. select material. Yeah. Versus some of the character, some of Mother Nature's handiwork that's left in a lot of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and for the most part, when we're um, cutting it up out in the rough mill, I'm trying to leave full product go into it where I'm not high end in the clears out of it. I'm trying to give the customer the full product so you get the variety of everything. You're getting a nice mix. Yeah. You're, you're not being yeah, some, overwhelmed with the character. You still got some clear mixed in there. Break it up a little bit. Yeah. And, and it, it depends on the sawmill that I'm buying off of, the logs they're dealing with. You know, it, it's random. I'm not saying it's always going to be... Uh, 80-20 split or anything like that, but it can be some nice wood in it and character. The the neat thing, and I just I, I just want to make the folks aware at home, this Livesawn product, it doesn't matter whether it's the Livesawn White Oak or whether it's Select Red Oak or Select Maple or Black Walnut, it's going through all the same operations as the rest of our flooring line. Mm -hmm. Take us through that. So, um, Predominantly buying in uh, lumber green from sawmills. You know, I'll call them local within 150, 200 miles. Um, we're buying lumber out of PA, Ohio, West Virginia. And so I like to dry all of our own lumber so we've got total control over it. And I always say there's a difference between drying lumber to sell and drying lumber to use in your own facility, in which we're using at our own facility. So take extra time and care drying it to make sure that it's right. Um, then we run it through our rough mill, you know, where we're putting it into a fixed strip, uh, cross cutting it, pulling out the large defects um, in the rustic products, in the clear work course, clear is clear. Um, so we're cross cutting it, sorting it by width and length, coming out the back end. And then depending on what process is next with the flooring, then it goes to our flooring molder, uh, which will get molded, then end matched. And then if it's pre-finished, then it goes to our pre-finishing line. If not, it's strapped up and ready for shipment right there. The reason I asked that, and I wanted to, to impress upon the folks watching, that just because it's a rustic caliber product, the quality of the manufacturing process is identical oh, yeah. to a clear yeah. select grade product. And, and, and that is one of the things that differentiates Baird Brothers floor from a lot of strip floor manufacturers. Yeah, the, the, the big strip floor guys run fast. The run fast, you run loose. We don't run fast. We run at a good pace, but we can run tight and still hold our production where it needs to be at. We're always going for tolerance over production. See, and, that, and, and, and you, boy, you threw that out there for me. I've always compared our flooring manufacturing to our moldings. Mm -hmm. Moldings have always been held to a higher standard. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we've always told people that. We're a molding manufacturer that produces a high quality hardwood flooring product. Yeah, yeah, the, the tolerance is that we, you know, the, the thickness, um, you know, the width tolerance is we're holding twos, probably plus or minus two or three thou. Yeah. Uh, reference point between the tongue and the groove, we try to be within that same two, three thou. Um, you know, wood's wood, it'll change as the humidity changes after we machine it. We're taking that into consideration if you leave it set out in the humid area, the ends are gonna swell. And, and it's so important. A, a lot of things come into play with environmental conditions. Uh, the way you dry the lumber, right? That's point, I mean, right off the get-go. But for folks that have never had to fight a floor to install it, if the tongue and groove is too tight and you 
we, we say we have to beat the stuff together. You yeah. shouldn't have to beat it together. No, no, it should fit snug. Right, a snap. Yeah, and, and depending on, you know, not every piece lays perfectly flat. The ones that are bowed a little bit are going to go together harder, but still, it's, you know, a machine fit. Yeah, you know, even side to side from the index points on the groove side versus yeah. the index side. Yeah, and that's what we, we call a reference point. Right, and, and I mean, if those are off a little bit, that'll give an installer nightmares. Yeah, yeah, and it, yeah, you, you know, and you hear people having problems with big box stuff, store product, that the, the widths vary too much. The where they got to lay out pieces. Right, and when you're doing a 24-foot run down a room, and say we're using six-inch material, and you have one board that you're your next piece down, and it's a sixteenth under. Yeah. So now on that butt joint, there's a sixteenth variation. Mm -hmm. So when you come down with that next strip that you're running, now you overlap that joint, and now there's a gap. Yeah. And the rest of the floor don't have gaps. Yeah. 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 And that's that goes back to that big difference. What I always call running fast and loose, or slower and tight. And, and, you know, we've, we haven't necessarily shied away from it, uh, but the wider plank, you know, our, our standard family of hardwood floorings has always been two and a quarter industry standard strip floor. And then we've always offered three, four and five inch. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have ran wider widths in the past with this live saw in white oak, we're offering it three to seven and like you mentioned, possibly. Uh, yeah, the go option's past there that. to go wider. <clears throat> so it makes you think. And, and I've, I've had uh, the free education over the years out on job sites. Once you get past that five inch, a lot of installers get a little bit nervous about movement and cupping. Mm -hmm. So they take an extra insurance policy out, and I, uh, myself, I think it's a good one. I agree. That they'll introduce a, uh, a lot of time, a urethane-based membrane, uh, very much like tile set, and they'll put that down so you have the benefit of a built-in moisture barrier, you have an adhesive across the full bottom width of that board, and then you still have the mechanical nail fastener. Yes. Um, and you don't, not saying you can't have problems with it, but when done right in the house environment is controlled, humidification, dehumidification, you don't have problems with it. No, I, I don't see. If your subfloor is tough enough to hold the, um, the wood down, or if you put it down on cruddy plywood, the plywood will fail you know, the, the glue won't. Yeah. So starting with that foundation of gluing it down and nailing it, I don't, wouldn't have a qualm in the world about putting down a wider plank. You know, and, and the same holds true for the narrower widths of, of uh, the three, four, and five like we typically mm -hmm. offer. In just a nail down application with uh, a vapor barrier, uh, we, we like and recommend the Aqua Bar product which is a, a paper and a asphalt membrane uh, for the vapor barrier and, and the workability of a paper product. But if you put a three, four, five down, follow the correct nailing pattern. And if you do not control the environment inside of that home, any one of those, three, four, or five, can give you heartache too. Yeah, yeah, wood really only moves because its moisture content has changed. Right. which the moisture content changes because the humidity has changed. <clears throat> so it's, it's absolutely critical to try to maintain as uniform humidity level in your home as you can. Yeah. Or you, you go with it the understandings that summertime it might cup a little bit. Winter times it'll pull flat and you might pull a gap. Right, right. And that's, you know, we, I've always used the example of, of the pendulum and, and the inside of our homes 
being the range of, of that pendulum and from winter to summer yeah. and winter to summer. And it's our job as homeowners uh, with hardwood floors to minimize that pendulum swing exactly. inside our home. That way it's, the floor isn't going through a shock. We've, we've witnessed it. We've seen floors, we reference it as push when it picks up moisture. Mm -hmm. So again, we were talking a little bit before we, we came on camera. Take a, take a room that's 20 foot wide. We're laying six inch floor. So we've got 40 boards going in that room to cover that 20 foot. If each one of those boards grows a 32nd of an inch, 40 over 32 is over an inch growth yep. across the body of that floor. And I liked your comment, it doesn't matter whether it's a three or four inch board or whether it's a seven inch board, that's the capability of movement. Yeah, yeah, for the most part, yeah, if you let it swell and grow. Right. So then you start seeing some camel humps, you see some push out mm -hmm. to the side barrier walls and, and it stops and then you really can have some cupping or humping in the floor <clears throat> and vice versa. November rolls around. Now you've had a little too much growth in the summer. Fall comes through, November heat sources kick on. Now the opposite's happening. We're, we're, we're drying that lumber oh, yeah. back down. Yeah, you'll, you'll start pulling gaps in your floor. And you start seeing that gapping, right. Yeah. So it, it's, it's of the utmost importance for, uh, like anything we own, whether it's a vehicle or uh, the hardwood floor in our homes or the cupboard doors in our kitchens, we have to maintain it. Yeah, yeah, trying to keep a steady humidity level. And there's times you, you can only do so much, um, but you try to do the best you can with the dehumidifiers and the air conditioning in summer, you know, humidification in the winter. Because, because we're, we've, we've introduced and now we're, we're really starting to promote this lives on uh, white oak, character grade white oak flooring, because it's a beautiful product. Oh yeah. It's a gorgeous product. Uh, it can be used in, in anything from uh, cabin style homes to, uh, like I said, the modern farm. We, we finished that one project over on the East Coast with this old house. And uh, they used, at that time, it, it was live sawn. That was one of our first live sawn product, uh, projects because we did those long one by 12s yeah. for the overhead beams, the cantilever beams. Yeah. And because we are who we are at Baird Brothers over here in Canfield, Ohio, it'll be special order and it will have special pricing, but some of the accessory products would be available also. Yeah, yeah, to a certain extent. I mean, it's, um, yeah, it can be made. Right, I mean, that's, that's kind of what we've always hung our hat on. Yeah, I mean, width is gonna come if you come to us and you want 16 foot one by 12s. Right. They're gonna be glued. Right, and actually I believe those, those boards were up there uh, in New England, uh, but you know, we've, in fact, the photography's on our website at bairdbrothers.com in our This Old House section, uh, living in, in, uh, on, on the uh, homepage, the landing page, that, turned, that project turned out gorgeous. Yeah. And again, that was, uh, that house had a lot of glass, uh, lighter shades, and they wanted that light floor, light accent woodworking, and it was the ticket. So there's a lot of possibilities with, with the live sun. Uh, the flooring is a great place to start in my eyes. Yeah, because then there's, you know, and like I said, you get into the narrower stuff, you know, say like if you all of a sudden decide you want trim out of it, it's going to look the same as darn near a rustic white oak product. Right. So taking that out in consideration too. Uh, take a take a beautiful white oak tree, and you've got that that nice butt log, and a lot of times that might qualify for veneer yeah. veneer logs, right? Uh, and then you might take another eight footer off of it and you're getting close, it might be a beautiful grade log, but then you start coming into the canopy limbs 
then is when we start to see this this product. Am I? Yeah, to a certain extent. You watch with the the big stuff. I mean, what you hear a lot of guys talking is around a 14, 16 inch log. That's what they're that's what they're sawing for. A lot of times. Yeah. Um, you know, a low grade log that might go for blocking or pallet lumber. Right. Right. Um, because it's yeah, there you're you're taking a product that would go say to make pallets or blocking, you know, timbers and that. Now you're turning it into a paneling product that and and as a layman, not a sawyer, this sawing process of live sawing, it it has to, in my eyes, it, it, does your yield go up on the log? Oh yeah. Yeah, for the most part it does. I mean, and it, it depends. Um, you know, you might have that center board that has a pith all through it, but like I said, you know, typically the pith, the center of the log, will blow up for honeycomb um, just because of what it is, and you rip that out, and you're throwing that away. So right. it's a little bit there, but for the most part, you're, it's got a good recovery on it. Right, right. Um, you're getting your log squared up and slicing it all the way down. So folks, there you have it. A little bit of information about the live sawn character grade white oak flooring product that we're offering. Uh, visit us at BairdBrothers.com. Off the main menu bar, flooring. It'll take you to the group family flooring page and you'll see the uh, uh, live sawn character grade white oak living there and also through some of our gallery pages you can see it listed there also so terry thanks for popping in this afternoon you i know bet. you're busy out there in the rip barn and everywhere else and uh but appreciate you taking yeah. some time popping no. in enjoyed it ladies and gentlemen till next time steve stack terry baird american hardwood advisor hang in there for all you folks listening Thanks for talking shop with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. If you've enjoyed this episode and want to stay up to date with the American Hardwood Advisor Series, give us a like and subscribe. For more tips, projects, and inspiration, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, or at BairdBrothers.com. Until next time.